Hi guys, we are back with MMA Roots. In this second edition, I will recall the importance of Master Carson Gracie in the beginning of Vitor Belfort, since the Jiu-Jitsu Blue Belt until his first UFC back in 1997. Everybody knows the importance of Carson Gracie in the history of Gracie family. After avenging the defeat of his uncle Hélio to Valdemar Santana in 1955, Carson started to be the main representative of Gracie family for almost two decades. But it was after his retirement from Vale Tudo Rings on 70s that he found out his biggest vocation, produce champions. Having an incredible eye to find new talents, Carson formed three generations of champions that completely dominated jiu-jitsu competitions in Brazil for more than two decades. After the huge success of Royce Grace in UFC in 1993, Carson started to migrate his black belt from dojo to rings and cages. No matter the place of the globe, if there were an NHB event, there was a Carson Gracie black belt in. Alan Goyes in Japanese Pan Crazy, Conan Silveira and Carson Gracie Jr. in American Extreme Fighting and Mario Sperring in Australian Cage Combat. But the factor of new talents couldn't stop. In 1994, I was covering Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu National Championship and Carson Gracie came to me and told me to keep my eye on a 17 years old Jiu-Jitsu Blue Belt. I followed the master chip, of course, and photographed a guy he called Vitinho, winning both weight category in absolute division. In the following week, I went to Carson's Academy to interview Carson and Mauri Bitetti, winner of absolute black belt in Brazilian Nationals, and the young Vitor waited for me till I finished both interview and asked his pictures. Few months later, Carson received an invitation from Frederico Lapenda to open his own academy in Los Angeles and decided to take Vitor with him. In May of 1996, when I was returning from my first UFC coverage, UFC 9 in Detroit, I decided to visit Carson in California, and he invited me to stay in his house together with Vitor Belfort where I had the opportunity to see closely the training routine and also the relationship that sometimes looked more like father and son. Sharing Jiu-Jitsu Dojo with the Carson and training with always tanking in LA boxing, Vitor started to create his own style. By that time, Los Angeles was like the martial arts city, the heart of the UFC. Once the Gracie name was already pretty famous, Master Carson started to introduce Vitor to the media as his adoptive son, Vitor Belfort Gracie. Of course, Belfort family didn't like the idea, and Vitor himself proved the master that the Gracie surname wouldn't change his future, overthrowing every challenge the master gave to him. In order to attract students to his academy, Carson started to address invitations to local big guys to test themselves with Vitor. I'm talking about nightclubs, safety bars, cops, every big guy Carson see in the streets he invited to a free class. That's how Belfort started to feel the responsibility of representing his master's name. Vitor once told me that one day he was finishing his lunch when a big wrestler got into the academy asking Carson to make a test. Vitor tried to tell the master to explain the guy they were closed in lunchtime, but it didn't make absolutely any sense to the old style Carson. If you are in a restaurant and someone sweep his hand on your wife's butt, would you ask him to return later? said Carson, asking Vitor to throw up the lunch and to do some valitude skills to the big guy. With those daily real tests, Vitor Belfort and Carson Gracie started to be recognized in West Hollywood area. Soon, some UFC stars started to show up, spreading good rumors about the talented phenom of Carson Gracie. Certainly, those rumors led the invitation for Belfort debut in Hawaiian Super Brawl against John Hess. Known for his eye attack on his UFC 5 opponent, Hess realized that his bad boy fame, spread by local press, could bring some psychological impact in the 18 years old boy and decided to raise the bets. 
In the day before the event, he demanded the promoter to change the rules, allowing eye gouging and groin shots, a request that obviously scared the young Belfort. Vitor immediately asked Carson to not accept the rules change once his biggest dreams was having many kids. But of course, Carson perceived the bluff and raised the bet, telling Vitor to shut up and asking the translator to tell the promoter his exactly words to the American. Tell him that Vitor not only accepted the rules, but allowed him to use a knife inside the ring. Carson's words transformed Belfort's initial fear in total self-confidence. And when the fight started, Vitor just needed 12 seconds to knock out the big guy, impressing the audience who had Lakers players Shaquille O'Neal and Kobe Bryant in the first seats, witnessing the Finon debut. Belfort's impressive win got him an invitation to fight in the UFC. Four months after Hess, Belfort just needed two minutes to knock out Trey Tellman and Scott Ferroso, winning the tournament of UFC 12 and finally making Carson's grace name famous in America. Less than three years after Carson tell me to keep my eye on his blue belt in a jiu-jitsu competition, it was a great sensation to witness Belfort winning the first UFC and receive both Carson and Vitor in my studio in Copacabana to produce his first cover page. Since then, 24 years have passed and many things happened. Master and student broke up, Belfort went to Pride, later Vitor conquered Cage Rage and UFC belts, and in 2006, Master Carson Grace had passed away. The fact is that winning or losing, Belfort faced the biggest names of three generations in different divisions, being able to keep himself among the top 10 for almost two decades. Today, the 43 years old Phenom is still in action, but when retirement time comes, he will certainly deserve a place in the Hall of Fame a homage that will be naturally extended to his master and mentor, the legendary Carson Gracie.